Well, Blake Baker is a very bright young coach who uh, coached the LSU linebackers this past season, and it's my pleasure to be speaking to him right now. Blake, uh, Merry Christmas. I uh, appreciate the time. Oh, Merry Christmas to you. Thanks for having me. Um, Blake, you made a comment on social media. Unfortunately, it is a business, and uh, I think a lot of LSU fans are very appreciative of what you did this past year, the improvement the linebackers made and so forth. But uh, just your thoughts uh, about moving on from LSU at this point. Um, you know, I'm just, uh, once again, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to, to come back home and, and, and to coach for this great university. And, um, you know, uh, without a doubt, just being around these players, man, it, it, it was a lot of fun. I really felt like myself again and had a blast doing it. And, you know, it's part of the business. I understand what we signed up for when, when we got into it. And, uh, you know, I never wanted to just be a place one year, but that's, that's, that's the nature of the business. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, to whatever opportunities present itself moving forward. Uh, and I guess just real quick, we should give uh, coach Ogeron uh, credit for giving you that opportunity and bringing you aboard. Absolutely. Absolutely. Coach O had everything to do with me uh, jumping on board and it was a pleasure working for him. Uh, just your thoughts uh, on Brian Kelly moving forward with this uh, LSU program. Do you think that the future is bright with him as the new head coach? I do. I think, you know, only spending a couple of weeks around him and it was it was kind of a, obviously a transition phase where he was bringing a new staff and, and we're preparing for the bowl game. And um, so didn't necessarily have a lot of one on one time with him, but uh, you can see the organization. You can see the uh, attention to detail, um, the accountability. I, I think he's going to have great success here at LSU. Um. And just the latest and greatest with you, you you were part of the recruiting class, obviously, the, the guys who just signed with, with LSU. I think it's 12 or 13 guys. Um, do you have any general thoughts on the, the guys you did recruit and who will contribute moving forward? Yeah, I think um, when you look overall at the class, I think it's, a, it's filled with a lot of high character guys, a lot of guys that wanted to be at LSU, regardless of, um, you know, the, the coaching change or the circumstances. Um, you know, you, you have some – Obviously, this, this this signing class for the state of Louisiana was um, was very strong on the offensive line, and and I think when you look at what Brad Davis did, and was able to to basically you know clean house here in the state with as much talent uh, as there is. I think you'll see some of those guys contribute early. Uh, Quincy Wiggins, you know, he's a physical specimen. I think he'll be able to help early, and uh, Demario Tolan, uh, especially with as much depth or lack of depth that there will be in the linebacker room this spring uh, and him being an early enrollee, I think uh, he'll have a lot, a lot of opportunity early on to, to um, get some playing time. Yeah. I, I joke when I see Quincy Wiggins coach, I remember being a senior in high school wearing like sweats underneath my jeans and three shirts, trying to look, <laughs> look yeah. more than 140 pounds or whatever I was. I'd see this guy at six, six, two seventy four. look like he could be in a movie right now. Um, it's just he's a little raw. Maybe he just got to learn the game a little bit more. He hadn't been playing football all that long, right? Yeah, yeah. I think um, you know. I think once the game slows down for him, you know, when when you had him in uh, in um, summer camp and you you could really see his skill set. That's why I don't think it's going to take him long. Um, I think he's one of those guys that uh, has all the 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 physical tools and, and just has to put it all together. But I don't think it'll take him long to be extremely successful. And I know you being a, a professional, you, you did your best to serve your employee and, and recruit LSU as well as you could, even knowing that your status was, was up in the air. Yeah. You know, I, I, and the biggest thing that I was telling, telling recruits is LSU is still LSU. And um, you know, the reasons that you picked this school in the first place have not changed. When you talk about the longstanding tradition, uh, obviously the the tradition of winning national championships, the tradition of uh, graduating players, the tradition of um, you know putting guys into the NFL, uh, all those things hold true, and and that's held true. To, you know, didn't matter who the head coach was or who the position coach was. Uh, I just think it's kind of the culture that's been set within the program, and um, you know th those things hold true no matter what. Good deal. Um, Damone Clark, we've been covering him for a long time from his days at Southern Lab. Uh, just really, really one of those gentle giants, right? I mean, a physical freak, but also a guy with a big heart, a caring heart. He obviously was disappointed to see you go. Um, just uh, your relationship with him and the improvement he made this year to uh, arguably be the best uh, linebacker in the country. I know some LSU fans felt like he should have won that Budkiss. 
Yeah, I think, you know, it started with our relationship. We were able to to hit it off right off the bat. You know, he's he's my guy. He uh, like you said, loving, loving, big heart, um, just unbelievable student athlete and um, somebody I wouldn't hesitate have, you know, babysit my own children. You know, I laugh all the time. I say one day I hope my son looks at me like a, like he does Damone, man. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's quite a sight, but, uh, I can't say enough good things about him, you know, and, and the improvement on the field. I know he always wants to, um, uh, give me credit, but really he's, he's, he's due for all the credit, uh, the, the way he works, uh, the way he worked in the off season, his leadership, um, his resilience after what happened to him last year. Uh, all those things can't be questioned after this year. And, um, you know, obviously number 18 is a big deal and um, he's, he's earned the right to, to wear that number forever. Yeah, coach, it's just been a pattern over the years with talented LSU linebackers. Uh, you can look at the NFL and there's so many of them uh, right now where it's somewhere between the sophomore and the junior year or junior year or senior year where something just snap, uh, clicks, you know, and they catch on. And uh, he obviously what, – what, what was the biggest improvement you saw out of him this year? Uh, probably the biggest thing that I, I saw was – it was probably twofold. I think, um, you know, me being able to teach him a couple tricks here and there, but really to pinpoint what he needs to key. You know, I think his eyes were probably the biggest improvement. I don't know what he was taught – necessarily in the past but I think that and then I just think an overall confidence you know one of my biggest battle cries this spring was uh, to all the linebackers you know um, is to not be afraid to make a mistake cut it loose I'm not going to take you out of the game every time uh, you don't do something right and I think maybe that kind of happened in the past where uh, just the trust in, in me to, to back up what I was saying I think helped a lot too. Uh, Micah Baskerville, coach, I remember the, uh, the 2019 national championship, uh, year, that was like the first time he, he flashed in a game against Vanderbilt. He blocked a punt and scooped it for a touchdown. And then, uh, Vanderbilt tried an onside kick and he caught it and almost ran it back for a touchdown. Burrow gave him a hard time, said he should have had two touchdowns that day, should have run it into the end zone, but, but just, uh, him being able to be a down in and down out, uh, impact teaming up with Damone there, they became quite the duo this year. Yeah, they had a natural, natural bond and a natural chemistry, um, you know, dating back to their freshman year. They were they were roommates in college and they got along really, really well and kind of where they're yin to their yang, where uh, Micah, um, he is a very uh, fo football comes very easy to him. You know, he he's one of those guys that just sees the game, feels the game. Um you know, and was really able to to process uh, very very quickly what was going on, even sometimes before before the snap. So uh, they they definitely complimented complimented each other well. But he's a heck of a football player. I think I think Mike has got a bright bright future. Um, you know, be it be it at LSU or be it in, in the NFL next year. Very good, uh, Mike Jones Jr., who LSU picked up from Clemson in the off season. I, I guess we think that guys are just supposed to be plugged in and they're supposed to be exactly what they were at the previous school. Um, you guys worked him in. And eventually we saw, especially in that Alabama game, we saw his speed and his uh, ability. Um, hopefully, you know, it looks like he's coming back next year and will be an impact moving forward. Yeah. I laugh all the time. You're exactly right. And, and even going back to like D Damone, everybody thinks it's, you know, add water, mix them around, throw them in the microwave for a minute, and voila, here comes, you know, an All-American, you know, strutting out on, on the, uh, into Tiger Stadium. But Mike is is the definition of hard work, persistence. He, um, you know, he has gotten so much better. I cannot wait to see see him in the bowl game and moving forward to next season because his best football is definitely in front of him. But the one thing I'll say about him, he never complained, um, never moaned always wanted to know what he could do to get better. Every time I came into the linebacker meeting room, he was watching film. Um, he's got a bright, bright future ahead of him. He has, he has really improved leaps and bounds, and I cannot wait to see him next season. Yeah, Blake, the first time they brought him to do interviews with the media on a Zoom like this, when he finished all the media, we were all like, please bring that guy back. He's like <laughs> the, best, the best interview we've ever had, you know, or one of the best. He was just uh, – He's great. Very bright kid. Yeah. Charismatic. Yeah. Great personality. That's, that's Mike. Awesome. Um, another guy who, who might be, uh, you know, out of sight, out of mind to some people, but I think certainly when they hear his name, they'll be rooting for him to come back and have a great finish is Jared Small. And 
he was in position to make an impact with the team this year. Very unfortunate uh, knee injury in the preseason that ended his year. Uh, talk to me about Jared. Jared is he's a stud. You know, he's a guy that has has uh, earned everything he's gotten, obviously, starting as a walk on. Um, you know, one thing I think that uh, he was very grateful for is when I came into the room, everybody started with a clean slate. It didn't matter if you were a walk on or if you were a three year starter. Um, and I know he's very, very appreciative of that, but it's an absolute shame. You know, it was a non contact injury, um, you know, Tuesday before we played UCLA. But I know he's working hard right now on, on rehabbing his knee and uh, I expect him to have a great season. He's really instinctual, uh, probably our best coverage linebacker, as a matter of fact, especially with running backs out of the backfield. Um, you know, he's not the biggest guy, but he, he packs a punch and um, just really, really smart, instinctual football player. I know it has to impress you as a coach, guys like that, and, and an Andre Anthony, another guy who, despite injuries, were still very engaged with the program, their teammates, during uh, during games, uh, you know, the team's warming up. They're out there helping and, and, and trying to, uh, you know, make an impact even when they can't play. Yeah, Andre, he, he, he's a consummate professional. He's uh, been around this program for a long time. And like I said, it would be very easy for him once he got hurt to kind of push the team aside and start focusing on himself and his um, individual goals as far as going and playing in the National Football League. But he didn't. He was there uh, every single day supporting his teammates uh, calling team meetings when, when things weren't going well. Uh, I, I can't say enough good things about him. A few more things with Blake Baker. Appreciate your time. Uh, Brad Davis, it seems like a lot of the things I would say about him, I could say about you as well. Uh, a guy with local ties. Uh, seemed like he got great reviews from the players and the group that he coached seemed to improve as the year went on. How, what can you say about Brad remaining on the LSU staff and and leading LSU in this bowl game, which is kind of a, a difficult situation for them. Yeah, I can't say enough good things about Brad. He, uh, I, First off, I'm extremely excited. When he told me he was getting retained, I gave him a big bear hug, man, because I know this is where he wanted to be and, and this is home. And, um, you know, he had some different opportunities uh, out there that he kept shutting the door on because he wanted this to work, and, and I'm extremely happy for him. Uh, but he's, he's a, he's a stud, you know, this is really, it's kind of funny now sitting back these last couple of weeks and, uh, him leading the team, you know, as a position coach, you really never get to go sit in another position coaches, uh, meeting, or you don't necessarily know how they communicate or how they teach. And, uh, these last two weeks have, have been awesome. Just watching him in front of the team, watching him in front of the staff. Uh, I think he's a, he's a professional. I think he's a, a very good leader. I think he com communicates very well with the staff and with the team. Uh, and I really hope he goes out with a – or goes in and out with a bang. You know, his, his first and last game was the head coach at LSU. I, I really want uh, them to pull it out just for him. He's, he's a good, good man. Uh, Blake, just real quick on him, can you speak to the difficulty of getting a job uh, in early June and, and have it? You know, because you you were hired, what, I guess, five months before him, at least, or something like yeah. that. Yeah, it's funny you say that. When I was at Louisiana Tech, uh, we were like one of the – we hired – that's when they had the, the 10th coach um, added in, and, and we hired a special teams guy and, um, you know, just watched the um, the transition from that. And and same with Brad. It, it's got to be tough, but, uh, man, he, he – he walked in like he'd been there for, for 10 years. And I think the kids, uh, he earned the kids trust and respect right away, which says a lot, you know, it's not necessarily easy to do, uh, but he, he did an outstanding job in, in a very difficult situation. Uh, Durante Jones, another bright young coach like yourself, and certainly a lot of LSU fans as the year went on, he seemed to kind of build up um, a following or at least the belief from some LSU fans that he deserved a shot at the, defensive coordinator job moving forward. Uh, certainly the defense we saw against Alabama and Arkansas and Texas A&M was, was highly improved from earlier in the year. Yeah. Durante, he's, he's, he's awesome to work with. He's humble. Um, he's loyal. Uh, he's smart. Um, I can't say enough, enough great things about Durante. And um, you know, the one thing that, that he did do, you know, his first year really calling it was he, just continue to get better. He rolled up his sleeves. He went to work. Um, and every single, every single week, man, it felt like he was more and more comfortable uh, calling games. But uh, you're, it's going to be hard-pressed to find a better man in this business than Durante Jones. I can assure you that. He is, he is as good as he gets. 
Wow. Well said. And finally, on the coaching staff, uh, Andre Carter. What was it like to be around him as well? Another guy that looked like he could uh, <laughs> put on the yeah. pads and, and play. Yeah, exactly. There's there's a reason he was the seventh overall pick in the draft, man. He he looks like he can still play. But, the, um, excuse me, Andre, he does a, a great job communicating with the kids. I think him being where they all wanted to go kind of – kind of opens their eyes and, and they kind of probably view him a little bit differently because he's been in the shoes that they want to walk in one day. So a uh, really good ball coach, um, you know, really good man, really good family man. His son Quincy was up there all the time. I felt like he was, he was one of the players, man. So uh, can't say enough good things about, about Andre. Uh, and the, the LSU team overall, I mean, you were around them. What, what senses do you get or what sense do you get from them heading into this Texas bowl? And, and, you know, obviously, um, it, it's not a uh, huge bowl game, but uh, finishing over 500 is certainly better than the uh, alternative. Yeah, I think when you look at, at LSU as a as a whole, but especially this year, uh, the one thing that you can't deny is these kids came out and competed every single week, regardless of the circumstances, coaching changes, injuries. Um, it, it doesn't matter. These kids go out there to, to win the game. And, uh, you know, I, 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 especially in today's age, I don't think that can be underestimated. And, and it's a credit to the, to the young men in that locker room. They've stuck together. Uh, the coolest thing was watching some of these guys that were seniors, uh, maybe necessarily wouldn't have got a, a huge opportunity to, to play. And throughout injuries, man, they really stepped up and, and had, you know, the best seasons of their life. And you don't see that, you know, nowadays, a lot of kids are transferring out and these kids that, that were seniors kind of stuck through it and got their opportunity to play and made the most of it. So I think they're going to be hungry. I think they're going to be wanting to win the game and um, I'm excited to watch them play. I'm, I'm going to be rooting hard for them. Blake, uh, the AD at LSU, Scott Wilbert, um, I noticed before the Ole Miss game, he came up to you and made an effort to really have a, a nice discussion with you and, this was after, of course, Coach Ogeron. We knew he wasn't coming back. But uh, just me watching from afar, that was a case of the AD knowing, hey, look, I know these are tough times for you guys, but I'm kind of like a family member. I'm here to help you kind of make it through this. Was that was that kind of what, what it was? Or? Yeah, Scott and I, we have a great relationship. Um, he's a wonderful man. He, uh, you know, I, I think we, we, we both have a mutual respect for each other. Um, I definitely uh, – you know, probably never had it. Well, not probably. I've never had a relationship with an AD like that before. As a guy that showed his face in the building, wasn't just there during good times or wasn't there, uh, you know, only during bad times, which is unique. Um, but I, I can't say enough good things about Scott. He's he's a tremendous man, a tremendous leader. Um, and obviously he's doing great things. You know, he's back home at LSU. All right. Last thing with the great Blake Baker. So. Uh, I'm going to take you back to 2002, the Louisiana Superdome. So Blake, Blake's got a brother named Bo. He's a, he was a big shot. He played Texas. He was a Longhorn. All right. So he's an offensive lineman. So the Texas Longhorns come in there and uh, uh, Bo Baker playing for, uh, for Texas. Blake is a scrappy linebacker for Tulane. Tulane's getting beat 49, nothing. And Bo, in his words, they break a run and and he's got this kind of arrogant strut going as an offensive lineman. And then what happens, Blake? Uh, I, I decided, well, nowadays you'd probably get kicked out for, for what I did. Well, <laughs> not probably you would, but I decided to put my, my uh, screws right up under his chin and, and lay into him real, one time, you know, just for old time's sake and something that, you know, even 20 years later, we're still talking about. So he knew it was me before the back of his head hit that Superdome turf. So it's something that we, uh, we still laugh about to this day. It was a decleater. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, nowadays, you, you'd for sure get kicked out for, for what I did to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Bo said, you know, we won the game 49 nothing, but when we talk about it at Christmas or Thanksgiving, it Blake won the game. That's know, right. Because of that I, hit. I, I won the battle. He won the war. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, man, I really appreciate your time. You're a class act. you got a beautiful family. And uh, I just think, I think one was five years, 10 years. I think Blake Baker is going to boomerang back to LSU. So that's just, you never know in this business. I appreciate it. Let's hope so. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good one.